Well, I'm so confused on this one. I don't know what's up and what's down. But anyhow, this is a car stereo from a Honda with a cassette deck. And the customer did have a note on it. You know, ship with treble knob missing. You know, it makes high pitched noise. And he was nice enough to include the harness because I have no way to connect this otherwise. So let's take a look at this thing. Honda 2000 with Dolby. With a little clean light there. So, well, let's go ahead and hook some power up to it. Hook it up to some speakers and see what actually happens with this thing. Okay, I've got four speakers connected to this unit. I'm supplying 13.8 volts with current limiting set at two amps. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what happens. And I did hear a little squeak. And I am getting some sound. I wonder if I can tune a station with no antenna connected. No, I'm gonna have to connect an antenna to it. One moment. Okay, we'll take that again now. Let's go ahead and power this thing on. Well, I see that I'm having trouble turning down the left channel volume completely. Oh, I'm not sure what's going on there. As a group life insurance policy. If I turn it all the way to the right, it draws over two amps. Now, Ray, who's 40 and takes medication to control his high blood pressure, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. That's, That's not good. Okay. If Select Mode didn't shop for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For yeah, it's definitely going into current limiting. For some reason. But at a minimum, we need to clean that volume pot and see if we can get the volume to turn down on the left channel. Interesting. Truth about timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, well, you what? Well, I did hear a small squeak upon power up. Just a little chirp when it powers up. But I'm not really getting any kind of squeak otherwise. I just can't turn the volume down on the left channel. Well, let's take the top of the bottom off and see what it looks like inside. Well, there is the view of the bottom of the circuit board. I was expecting to see some bad solder connections, but everything looks pretty doggone good. Let's flip it over and take a look at the top. Well, there's the top view. Pretty nicely laid out, I must say. Looks like this thing was built by Alpine, judging by the IC in the previous view. So let's go ahead and try to figure out what might be going on with this and why it's giving the customer a squeal and why it is drawing excessive current when I turn the fader to either front or rear only. Okay, so the first thing I notice is as soon as I turn my power supply on, the motor tries to move forward and backwards. And even though the power is off right now, I'm drawing 1.72 amps. So something's going on in here and I just don't know what it is yet. So I think I'm gonna pull the tape mechanism out of it and see if that changes anything by disconnecting the motor. I wonder if it's trying to load and it's just jammed up at this point. Okay, so I have removed the tape mechanism. Basically just four screws, one, two, three, four, and then one connector and the whole thing just lifts out. But right off the bat, right there, that's a 1000 microfarad 6.3 volt cap and I see leakage coming out of it. Might be kind of hard to see on the camera, but one lead is much darker than the other lead and there's electrolyte on the circuit board. So that is definitely going to be an issue. Let's go ahead and try to power this thing up again, see what happens with no tape mechanism. And I'm back down to 0, 0.00 amps. Let's power this thing on. And I'm up to 1.14 amps right now, and I've got no display without the tape mechanism in place. No sound. Oh, still goes in the current limiting though. If I turn the fader, to the right channel. And it's definitely going into current limiting 10.4 volts at 1.98 amps. That's not right. 
Okay, so in an effort to alleviate the tape problems first, so it's not drawing 1.7 amps continuously, I went ahead and pulled the tape mechanism apart and I pulled off the old belt and this thing is just, it's used up, once again, very slow response. Uh, it was turning the cap stands, but it was very slow. You see it creeping right there. It shouldn't creep. There should be no creep on this thing. It should snap back to its original shape instantly. So I have a new old stock PRB SCX 11.8. I'm going to go ahead and prep it with acetone and a paper towel and get it ready to go. Clean the motor pulley right here, which I've already lubed the bushing on, as well as clean both cap stands. And this, this is what drives the uh, take up reel. And then I want to go ahead and clean these two switches right here. Uh, they detect what state the mechanism is in and if they're not making good contact as, as we've seen in previous videos Especially with the JVC Multi-disc player that I posted just about a couple of weeks ago uh, That can be a big issue. So we'll go ahead and get some deoxid D5 into these things clean them up and Hopefully with a new belt everything cleaned up. Hopefully that will alleviate all of the tape transport problems Okay, new belt is installed. Went ahead and cleaned up all the pulleys with the cotton swab and acetone. Everything looks great. I did go ahead and re-lube this gear right here. It was very dry and definitely making a uh, oscillation noise as you turned it, so everything's good. I did go ahead and clean both of these switches right here with some Deoxit D5, which is meant for contact switches. To go ahead and lube some of the other bushings right here so everything is good right now i'm going to go ahead and throw this thing back together and hopefully the tape problems are alleviated and we can focus on the customer's main concern which was a squealing sound maybe the tape transport was the whole problem uh, drawing excessive current pulling the power supply down and causing some kind of oscillation but let's put it together put it back in and see if we have any change whatsoever well i still can't turn the volume down but it did alleviate the tape issues. So the tape transport does work correctly at this point, but I still have a problem with the volume control. So I'm going to go ahead and spray some deoxid. And I did get a squeal last time I turned it on. Let's see if it does it again. So I'm thinking there's some bad caps, probably back here on the power amplifier board, most likely. I get a little chirp upon startup, and that should not happen. So pull the mechanism back out of it. I didn't put any screws back in it, so I can actually just lift it up, and the mechanism comes right out. It's only got that one connector right there that connects it. Well, tape transport is going, so... Let's go ahead and address the other capacitor issues. We'll have to pull the power amplifier board out of the unit and see if there's anything going on there. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, there is the power amplifier board and oh my goodness. Let me get a focus on that real quick. Anytime you see black on a green circuit board, that means capacitors have leaked through the board. So we're going to have to go a little bit deeper into this thing at this point. Well, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that is the reason this thing is squealing and why it draws so much current when you try to shift the fader from front to rear. Look at all that. This is actually electrolyte on the board just in liquid form right here. I wonder if I got an ohmmeter out, if I could actually measure voltage and or resistance right here. But all this stuff right here, that is electrolyte that is leaked under the conformal coating that's on the board and it's actually corroding the copper. So it's gonna need to be cleaned and probably stainless toothbrushed down to the original coating. I've done many of these units and the coating is actually not that necessary as long as the board is clean. Many, many years ago, they didn't even use this green conformal coating on these boards, but we'll go ahead and see where this leads us. I hope everyone's ready to go down this rabbit hole. Here we go. So now because the coating is still good here, 
I'm just going to go ahead and put my voltmeter in the goo. Let's put it right there and right there. And if we see anything at all, and we do, we see 2 million ohms. So this goo actually is conductive. I wonder if it has a voltage on it. Let's go from ground to the goo. And I do see voltage. Look at that. So this is actually capacitor electrolyte. There should be no voltage on this board whatsoever at this point. So, yep, it's going to need to be washed completely. Probably go ahead and pull the power pack IC. This is the big uh, power amplifier IC right here. I'm not sure if it's a two-channel or a four-channel power amp that lives down in there. But these caps are going to need to be changed. Uh, there's two regulators over here. They might be... Uh, linear regulators they might be transistors i'm not sure they kind of look like they're probably linear regulators based on these capacitors right here maybe a 5 volt and a 9 volt let's get better focus on that i'll try to fold these up just a little tiny bit so we can see what's actually on them well, i see a 7805 on one and a 7806 on the other one so this one is a 5 volt Linear regulator, this one is a 6 volt linear regulator. We'll have to unsolder those or just take them off the heat sink. Now getting this power amplifier chip off the heat sink is going to be a bit more of a task because I can't get to the screws. How'd they build this thing? They put the chip on the heat sink and then assembled it. So I'll have to unsolder the chip from the heat sink. And then we can actually pull this board off of the heat sink and do all the cleaning that we need to do. So before I do anything, I thought I'd just go ahead and do an ESR check on these capacitors on this board just to see what shape they're in. Because a lot of times, just because they're leaking, they may still have a very good ESR. They've just lost a little of their electrolyte. So this big cap is a 3300 microfarad cap, and I would expect to see like 0 0.01, 0 0.02 on it. And I see 5 ohms. That thing is toast. And so looking down in here, I don't know what value this cap is right there, but I can tell you it is a 105 degrees Celsius cap. Kudos Honda for, or Alpine. Kudos Alpine for using a 105 degrees Celsius cap. The one next to it right there is a 220 microfarad cap. So let's see what that one checks like. Oh, and it's open, 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 open. And the 105 cap, I get nothing on that whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, I think at this point I'll give the customer an estimate. I can't guarantee that the uh, balance fader control is going to be resolved with just some deoxid F5. I'm not sure about that. They're pretty much enclosed pots. I don't know if I can actually get the deoxid down in there to do the job. I may have to actually take the pot off the board and completely clean it. But we'll see what happens. I'm this far into it, and I think I've got a pretty good idea what's going to go on with this thing so that I can accurately estimate it to my customer at this point. Anyhow, I'm going to say that's it for part one of possibly two or maybe even three parts on this unit, depending on how far down the rabbit hole this customer really wants to go. By the way, for information, this is a accessory, it says, part number 08A01-101-230, reference number CM3509B as in boy. Once again, I certainly hope you enjoyed the diagnostic portion of this unit. Like I said, only time will tell what's going to happen. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. Good or bad, I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're done, there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. If you send me a message on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, it might be weeks or even months because I rarely check those messages. Please, if you want to contact me, use the Gmail address. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Thank you for making it to the end of this, hopefully, two-part video if the customer approves the estimate. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, bye-bye. Just going to go ahead and place the board down here. It's going to clean all the electrolyte off the board and everything should be 
as good as I can get it. Now, maybe not like new, but very close. So I'm just going to select the Pro Wash Cycle with no heat and no high temp. All right, dishwasher is done. Much, much better. Look at that. No electrolyte. It's all washed off.